Hello my friends, this is the harbor of the Sevastopol city, Crimea, and the last night could be peaceful for Russia, but they decided to go for Ukraine, and sometimes they got the payback. So this video is the CCTV camera mounted at the edge of the bay, and you can see that there are some shells firing to the water service. They are trying to destroy the water drones that were on their mission to attack some of the ships in there area. Probably you already know that I was born in Sevastopol and I know this city very precisely, it's my hometown. So this ship on the left, it's not a military ship, it's the commercial ship that is used to transfer people from one side of the city across the bay to the other part. And also there are two sea routes and two ferries to transit the cars also from one side of the bay to another. But here, just near to the commercial route, it is the military port. And the shadow over there, as you can see, it's the silhouette of the military ship, quite a big one, because you can see that the camera was filming from one side, and here in the middle you can see the ship that has the same size as the ship very far behind on the background. So what happened to the ship? Well, this. I cannot show you the full video on YouTube, but the drone seems to go to the aft part of the ship, I think below the waterline, because if the ship is empty, the waterline is upper than usual, and maybe it even sank, but we don't know the information from the eyewitnesses, because it's kind of the closed city, and Russia cannot provide any evidence for us, because it's the big reputation loss for them to provide the information whether they lost one more ship hopefully we'll still obtain the information about the ship and whether it was destroyed or damaged from the locals who live in the place because Sevastopol is quite a populated city and there are many military and sailors live in that place and obviously they know each other and rumors spread widely that something like that happened but for today, the bay is closed for commercial shipping. That also tells a lot about this story. And remember, once Ukraine used those drones to attack Russian ships before, and Admiral Makarov, the flagship of the Black Sea Marine Fleet nowadays for the Russian forces in that area, well, it was damaged by this particular drone. As you can see on the back side, we have some sort of the antenna over here, and this is the camera to provide live footage for the operator who might be located very far from this scene. By the way, I uploaded the full video on my Telegram channel and before we continue with that case my friends let me tell you about the sponsor and also the long-term partner of my channel the Atlas VPN they came out with a great big deal proposal for my viewers and my subscribers so now you can get the Atlas VPN premium for just 183 per month this deal is time limited so hurry up to join the club and now I'm gonna tell you why the Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. You may hear that I'm not the native English speaker and what helps me to improve my English? Honestly, watching the live shows on Netflix. My favorite series to study is France but it's not available in my country but then I turn on the Atlas VPN well, it is now available for me. I also rent my current house with a great discount using Atlas VPN. For example, booking doesn't have the fixed price and it may vary depends on your country. So by changing your virtual location, you may find the best price. Atlas VPN encrypts your data so it's out of reach by the government, annoying ads or hackers. And yes, believe me, your personal account may be vulnerable, especially when you use the public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN has the breach monitoring service that helps to prevent the hacking of your devices. So then I see the warning message I disconnect from the public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN helps me to access services and websites sites which are blocked in my country. I don't know why, but Patreon is one of them. My friends, and now please check out the link below where you can sign up for the 3 years offer for 183 per month, where you can have 83% of discount together with 3 months for free. This limited offer is available with my personal link and it expires next month, my friends, so hurry up to join the club. All right, my friends, let's continue with the topic. Few words about the Sevastopol Bay. It's very convenient for any sort of the military base. You can see it's very wide and there are lots of the ports to park the military ships. 
And here you can see two of the dashed routes across the bay. They are used to transfer people and goods and vehicles from the north part of the city across the bay to the south part. And I think there are just three places where the drone attack might have happened because the commercial ship was very close to that area. Well, first of all, I think it could be one of those military ships. Uh, this is some sort of the frigate, the old uh, ship, but here you can see two of the military ships. Also, this one fits quite well as well because it has the upper deck, which also fits the video. And also this could be the one because it is much bigger the shadow as we saw in the video was very big and this big ship over here it's the military hospital ship it has the crosses on the side and it colored with white color so i think this one could be but it's very close to the other ship so there are potentially two of the other places like over here we have some sort of the military ships but those are quite small and also on the north here we have the ships that are a little bit separate because on the video we saw just one big ship so it could be this one or maybe those ships as you can see russia has many of those in sevastopol if you go further you might find also submarines i wonder if we can see them on this map well i couldn't find those usually they stay in this area then you drive across this road you might spot them from your car and also from what i know russia blocked this uh, way out for the submarine so probably they moved also submarines out from the bay and now no any other submarine is able to come to the sevastopol bay just for their security so they have the special gate under the water but for the upper surface the water surface you can actually go there using the drone boats and one more video from the Sevastopol. So here's the entrance to the Sevastopol Bay. And this is the ball of fire. I think it is the drone that was targeted by Russian defense. But because there were many drones, one finally succeeded hitting the ship. Oh my god, Russia sends more tanks to Ukraine. What should we do with them? How should we fight back? Because Russia is known as the second army in the world with up-to-date technologies. So those tanks might be the undestructible Armata tanks as was advertised by the Russian government. But actually those are not the Armatas and they make the Russian old T-62 tank to shine brightly as the modern day weaponry. This is the T-54 tank. And it was designed in 1940s and taken to the Red Army by Stalin. This tank is older than Vladimir Putin himself. Uh, yeah, much older. The next modification of T-54 was T-55, which is also a very outdated tank. Well, it shows that Russia takes everything they have from the storages to have some sort of the tanks. You may say that this tank still can run and shoot yes i would agree with you but i think the crew of those kind of the tanks doomed for sure because it can be penetrated by mostly everything any kind of the anti-tank rpgs uh, not even speaking about the t64 tanks or t80 or t72 that we also have and about the western tanks what they could do with this machine leopards abrams and challengers with the depleted uranium shells. I don't think that this T-54 Russian tank is even worth wasting the unique shells to destroy it, but we'll do it for sure. Those tanks have no active explosives armor, they have no good aiming equipment, they basically have nothing. The guns still may penetrate any kind of the armored vehicles, but speaking about Bradley's, they have the anti-tank armor as well. But even against the T-62 and not even saying about T-64 and T-72, this tank really sucks and I wonder why Russia took it from the storages. They're really in a desperate, so the next move would be the T-34 Second World War tanks and after that horses. And Russia continued to modernize their old T-62 tank 
and here in this article they even say that t62 has advantage over the western made tanks they relate to american journal military watch well i haven't read the article on military watch but i can say that t62 really sags against the western made tanks even against the russian made tanks it's basically the old soviet crap we have the comment from Stoltenberg. He says that NATO should brace to support Ukraine with more ammunition and shells because Ukraine uses more artillery shells than we got from our allies. It's around four up to seven thousand per day. Just imagine this number. And Ukraine is in defense right now. Then our army will go on a counterattack. We need more ammunition shells. And if we take minimum like 4,000 shells per day, it will still be a lot after one year of war. And even 1 million shells per year is not enough. Interesting statement from John Kirby. He says that Russia is getting ready for more attacks in a few weeks. Probably they are going to expand the front lines on the eastern part of Ukraine, but Ukraine may also counterattack on the south. Today Russia hit two of the residential buildings in Zaporizhia with a smirch rocket and we have one of the casualties out there and many people were wounded and taken to the hospital. As you can see rocket exploded somewhere over here. Smirch is the rocket artillery system and just one missile could do this. It's the most powerful rocket artillery system that Russian Federation has. But they continue to use them not on the front lines, but against the civilian people in Ukraine. President Zelensky today visited the Bakhmut area, so I don't think he went to the city itself, but he stayed closer to the city and he met our soldiers and also he honored them with some of the medals as usual than he does during his visits. As for the Chinese leader Xi Jinping, he left the Moscow today. For today, there were several meetings planned in his schedule, but he just woke up this morning and took off from Nukova airport and flown back to China. Probably he already did what he should have done in his colony, Russia. And just after I upload this video, I'm gonna record a special podcast about the China, Russia and Ukraine situation. This podcast will be special for my my patrons and for the channel sponsors thank you so much guys for your support interesting story this is the russian patrol vehicle that is based at the border between azerbaijan and armenia as we know there was the conflict between azerbaijan and armenia not long time ago so russian peacekeepers were agreed to be put it at the border by two of the sides but really russians are not performing their functions and sometimes they even got shot by someone and here is the Russian pilot who I think accidentally collided with the Reaper United States drone over the Black Sea. Why do I think that it was the accident because of the reckless flying of this guy? Because if you watch the video of the collision again you would see that he was not looking at the drone because he was shadowed by himself. He was in such a large bank and pitch up that the drone was basically under his airplane and then you perform this maneuver you cannot be sure whether you hit the propeller blade or just smash into the drone and knowing russian military pilots yes i know someone from their side as well personally because i was grown up in sebastopol and some of my friends went to the russian federation and now serve in the russian army i do not speak with them any longer but i spoke with them before 2014 and i might say that they're very very strange and their behavior is not surprising me with this reaper drone attack and looking at this guy's miming probably the drone crossed the russian airspace but we haven't used our weaponry and basically there was no contact with the drone and somehow it drowned and now i have a new medal so this guy uh, tries to remind the script what he have to say to journalists and <laughs> basically at the very end he's just laughing because of the nonsense that he's saying yeah not laughing but smile a little and that is how the reckless flying was rewarded by shoigu the defense minister of the russian federation yeah this guy looks so funny in this uniform especially then it pushes his neck inward <laughs>
And for the Frontlines review, we have a new interactive military map from the militaryland.net. And let's go to the Bakhmut city, the hottest spot out there. So if we zoom in, you may see that we have lots of the forces in that area. And still we fight for the city. And Ukraine still has the supply line which leads from the city or to the city across Ivanovska. And this place may be also the road that leads from Chasovyar is used by ukrainian army or there is some sort of the secondary road which is quite tiny over here that the ukrainian army uses for now and i think this brigade actually the 8th regiment of special purpose is protecting the area for ukrainian supplies and we have quite a lot of the resources here to start the counter attack in the area and today it was reported that ukraine actually started the small counter attack in the area to push russians away from the city whether it was successful or not my friends so far we are in lack of that information and in general you can see where ukrainian side collected the forces uh, many of the forces are further away behind the front lines on the training and on the military drills and in the future they will be sent to fight on the front lines obviously as you see we have many of the units in the parisia oblast which is the possible point for the start of the massive ukrainian counterattack, which may cut the russian army into pieces and this is the standard military map from the deep state and here if we go to the timeline there is no any changes for today in the Bahamut area no any movement which is actually good so russian forces are definitely stuck in the city and here you can see the positions of the russian forces on this map i wonder why we don't have the resource to see both of the sides on the same map but definitely you can see that Russia also concentrated lots of the forces on the south in the Parisia area and also mostly on the eastern side of Ukraine, Donbass. About Avdivka, the situation there is far to be as in Bakhmut, because here is the regular army forces and also militia from the self-proclaimed republics and they are unable to achieve their goals that fast as Wagner did in Bakhmut and Solidar. So even though I'm quite concerned about this situation, I don't think that Ukrainian army will leave Avdiivka and I don't think that Russian army will take control over this place. It is too late for the Russian army to attack over there and simply they cannot even penetrate these defense lines since the beginning of the war. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated and if you want to support this channel, please go to the link in the video description below where you can check out my personal link for the Atlas VPN where you can get the big deal for just 183 per month. It is the limited offer for my supporters and hurry up to join the club my friends i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time